That's great. Um, now, now is the time um, to to welcome Paul Fremantle from WeWorks uh, to the stage. Um, ha have, Paul, a, have, you, have, have Paul come and join us. Paul, how are you? I'm good, Damani. Hey, Bianca. Yeah, no, it was a great day yesterday. I really enjoyed it. I thought I learned a lot and I'm really looking forward to today's sessions as well. It's um, it's kind of cool to be doing it on the Friday the 13th where Helm 2 is being deprecated. So we had to like, you know, try and pull people out of the nightmare. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Paul, I, I don't, I don't know if you, if you heard, if you heard all of the hype, but, but, but a lot of folks have been sitting tight to, to hear Stefan. So, so, so we have, we have, we have Stefan Prodon coming on this afternoon with a, with a deep dive, and uh, folks are, folks have been Absolutely. long awaiting that. So I'm excited to, to, to hear him come on and rock the stage. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be good. Yeah. So, shall I kick off with a few slides and talk us through? Uh, the, the kind of shift we're having from business to technical, which is what today is all about. I think so. Please I think do. so. Awesome. So take it away. Thanks, guys. Always welcoming. And um, and it was great to start the day with a bit of uh, Daniel DJ Desired States sessions. That was awesome. That was really got me in the right mood. <laughs> okay. See everyone a little bit later. So. As I just said, my session this morning is really just trying to kind of bring the shift that we're having. So yesterday, we were really trying to dig into the business benefits and, and uh, strength of, of GitOps. And today is a much more technical day. Now, there was plenty of good detail yesterday as well. So I, I don't want to like uh, say that there wasn't some interesting technical stuff. So if you didn't see it, if you were put off, um, please go take a look at the YouTube. I'm going to just review some of the things that we talked about yesterday and then try and introduce and highlight some of the really cool stuff that's coming today. So yesterday I started up with this message that, you know, every CXO in the world is saying we need to speed up. You know, every CTO, every CIO and every CEO. And that's definitely a big message of GitOps. And we talked about people, processes, and technology and how to address those. And those themes came up all through the sessions yesterday. But I think, you know, if I had to look at the themes that really st stuck in my head yesterday, you know, security, security, security. We had a lot of sessions on security, on audit, uh, and those were really important. And, and the same phrase kept coming up in those supply chains. This, this idea that we're building a software supply chain, that we are creating a new kind of supply chain is absolutely vital. And, and actually, I think this is, this is a, a, a major, major uh, theme as we move from you know, hand building software to rolling out massive clusters uh, and, and, and fleet management and deploying and gov and that leads really cleanly into this idea of governance, auditability and visibility, which were some big themes. Another big message that, that, that really fitted into the kind of people process technology was this idea of developer first. The idea that we, we really need to start with developers and get developers going. And, and they are the ones who will uh, drive the, the starting point of all these of all these uh, themes and messages. And, and then there was, <laughs> there was cults. Uh, that was, I was not expecting a presentation on the GitOps cult and that was amazing. That was awesome. Uh, and I know that was a big favorite of many of you. Um, so we'll get to that. So I think, you know, I started out yesterday with you know, we need to speed up, but I think I ended up yesterday with, we need to speed up, but don't screw up. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the big message here from yesterday was, we're not just speeding up, we need to make sure that we do not in, in create security flaws, we do not create uh, opportunities for people to hack, we do not create challenges as we speed up. And this is kind of, I think, really going to be a, a big focus of 
of these two days is the fact that GitOps, that that well-defined continuous delivery based around Git, based around version control, based around pull requests and merges, based around source controllers and delivery controllers can actually enhance both of these, can actually enhance the speed that we deliver, but also improve the security, the validity and the governance. And, and I think that was amazing. So that was a real message from yesterday. And just to talk about some of these things, is, is I think that that ability to fix the security problems, to fix the challenges, are really based around this idea of the supply chain. And, and Michael Hassenblast was one of many people yesterday who used those phrases. And, and I thought it was really interesting to, to the results of his survey. I mean, he had a lot of good stuff about, you know, what C-level execs are looking for. And I really encourage you to go look at his talk. But this was really interesting that 49% of, of people he surveyed in this year's container security survey are not yet enforcing policies. And that's actually pretty a pretty big number, 156 people, 155 people answered this question. And so OPA is definitely the winner in this space, but unfortunately the, the biggest bar on there is, is that number of people are not yet managing policies. So that is definitely an area that needs to be fixed. And I know this is a big area of, of how to use GitOps to actually make sure we don't screw up. Another, uh, another great talk about the supply chain and, and making sure we had a security hardened supply chain came from Ivan. And this is what I, this is exactly what we really talk about is this idea that you can make sure that it's secure at every stage at, at the image the base image coding building application image and deployment uh, and i think that was a really strong message and here is another really nice uh, slide from kenichi who talked about managing vulnerabilities in an automated way. So actually spotting the vulnerabilities, perhaps at the CI level, but if not at the, um, at the, at the GitOps level, and then doing di automatic uh, reporting into Stacksrocks. And same with incidents, automatic reporting to Slack, to Jira, and to uh, on-call alert systems. And I think this was, this was a really cool story. I really enjoyed this presentation. So we talked about GitOps for developers and this idea that we need to have an easy getting start experience, a local development environment, a seamless move from development to staging to production. And Matt from Sneak, Sneak had this idea uh, that we need to start security from developers, from the IDE, from the CLI, that we need to start analyzing the security challenges right at the very beginning with the developers. And I thought this is a really strong message. Uh, and I think one of the messages we're getting here is this shift to the left message, that in order to, to make all this work, we need to have the, the, the foundations in place properly we need to create a environment where people are thinking about security, are thinking about ops. And, and I just to go back to GitOps for developers, this move from development to staging to production is very much about that supply chain, but also making sure the vulnerabilities are detected throughout the supply chain, which was another strong message from, from Matt at Sneak. And I really like this chart where he talks about, you know, detecting vulnerabilities at development time, at CICD, at GitOps time. Yesterday, we, I talked about this idea of self-organizing teams, about boundaries and about freedom. And 
one of the talks that I think really fitted well with that was Steve and Gavin, who talked about building a self-service platform. And this is really about empowering teams and developers to build what they need. And this self-service concept is absolutely key. And this quote, I think, is just amazing. That got a proof of concept of a bank. I mean, this is not just a proof of concept of a, like a shop. This is a genuine bank called Metal from NetWest. Uh, in a few weeks, showing real transactions from customers in the ledger with zero help from platform. And I think that was an incredible story. And this speed, this velocity that that empowerment of the team brought uh, is just clear in this. Look at this, 418 releases to production in the last month, 104 releases average to production every week. 807 releases on average to all environments every week. And that's from last month. So uh, I'll come back to this again, but these metrics about velocity are absolutely key. And this bridge from, from our, our aims, you know, we need velocity, we need security, we need governance, we need to speed up but not screw up. Uh, these are all amazing stories of pe how people have brought about this. Scott will be talking later today again. Um, I think we can just sum up his excellent presentation in these four icons he used. Um, I, I thought that was lovely. Uh, and uh, for those of you who didn't see it, I have a little cheat sheet. Uh, he talked about velocity, simplicity, avoiding downtime and reliability. And once again, these are all about those, you know, speed up, but don't screw up message. And Tiffany did a great presentation talking and, and uh, this slide in particular grabbed me. The idea that, you know, move from these eight to 10 week release cycles, big bang with a release party, late night deployments to a completely automated GitOps deployment with 10 to 100 deployments a day, reliable re reproducible deployments and simple rollback. So this really talks to the process improvement and the people improvement, because this is not just uh, bringing a more reliable system, this is giving people a happier life. You know, they don't have to stay up all night uh, and, and stress out about a deployment because it's just everyday usage. And as I said, these, all of these things come to these four significant metrics, lead time, change fail, deployment frequency, and time to restore. And we heard very good statistics from Metal about that lead time uh, in re reducing by 50%, deployment frequency increasing by 50 to 75%, mean time to restore down from uh, days to to around 15 minutes. So these were amazing uh, results. And then we had Cornelia's talk and, and Cornelia's talk about patterns for GitOps. And, and I thought this was really insightful. And this story about delivery controllers and runtime controllers, I think was really, really interesting. So this is the idea that we are we have a set of changes to the Git repository. And we have two steps in managing this GitOps flow. One is to deliver that configuration uh, to the right place. And then the other is to do reconciliation and uh, drift management to make sure that we are always at the required result. And this is really about self-healing and automation. And this is one of those key messages, I think. And, and there's this very nice slide from Cornelia talking about the source controller, home controller, customized controller, and then those uh, runtime controllers that actually give us the reconciliation and drift management. And this creates a set of what, what 
Cornelia called GitOps pipelines, and those are really cool. And I, I really encourage you to, to sit in on the um, on Brees's demo, which is going to come up shortly on how to get Flux 2 running, and that will really dive into this, uh, into Scott's uh, discussion of how to migrate from the Helm operator to the Helm controller and how to really get these qualities with Helm and then Stefan this afternoon. So there's an amazing set of technical sessions today that are going to really dive into how to implement these kind of GitOps pipelines that give you that uh, speed, governance, and all the things we've talked about. And then we had joined the GitOps cult, which was just awesome. And uh, David Allen's presentation was really one of the highlights of my day. And I love this quote. Um, the, in fact, two quotes. There's the quote from Creed Bratton, which is, uh, you have more fun as a follower, but you make more money as a leader. That was hilarious. But actually, I really liked David's quote, which was, you're, see you're not seeking out new GitOps members. They come to you and you're ready for them. And, and that's, I think, uh, really insightful because if you look at GitOps, you know, the, the world is coming to GitOps because it's so clearly solving a problem. And of course, there are detractors and, and sometimes they, they don't understand it properly. Uh, sometimes they have their own good reasons, but fundamentally, we've seen this huge shift and, and we heard yesterday uh, Alison talking about the the growth of GitOps and that was really cool as well. One of the things David dived into uh, was something that I started the day with which is psychological safety and, and it's very very important to think about uh, not just the, the the processes and the technology but the people and this quote from, from Google about high-performing teams need a culture of trust and psychological safety. David had this, you know, this awesome concept of a playground. And this idea of creating a playground uh, that creates a psychological safe environment for people to mess up, deal with mistakes, and move on and build that psychological safety to 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 be um progress i thought was an amazing message i was really really blown away by that so what about today so we had a great day yesterday uh and we have an amazing lineup today so we have got a whole bunch of awesome speakers uh cornelia's back i've already mentioned Bree scott and stefan uh, Mahmoud, David, and Kishore are going to also talk. And we have Santochi talking about uh, RBAC, so role-based access control in the context of GitOps as well. So it's a pretty awesome lineup. Um, we're starting out with uh, Brees and the workshop on getting started with GitOps. That's a 90-minute session taking us through to a 12 o'clock break. Uh, after that break, we have uh, David Mackay from Equinox, Equinix talking about the law of Demeter. And this is really about a bare metal approaches to GitOps. As I mentioned earlier, we have some Tachi talking about tool-assisted RBAC for operators uh, just after that. Uh, and then uh, I'll be back to host a Q&A with, with those guys. So I hope you join me for that. Scott, Kishore, and Mahmoud are going to be talking about how Fidelity Investments uh, have migrated from Helm 2 and really talk about the Helm 2 deprecation in the context of the customer. And then Scott's going to follow that up with a session on what Flux could be for you. And then there's a Q&A about Flux 2 deprecation. Uh, sorry, about Helm 2 deprecation. Uh, and then we have a deep, deep dive from Stefan. You're always guaranteed a deep dive from Stefan. But this is everything you wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask about Flux v2. Uh, and again, a Q&A. And then finally, uh, a real kind of call to action from Cornelia, which is going to be, what is your first or next step towards powerful GitOps? And, and ending at around 4.30, so you can all go and have a, 
good weekend. So I'm lo really looking forward to this set of uh, events. And I think this uh, layout of really trying to build the, the motivation for doing these things yesterday, and then the how can we do it and how can we move forward is a, is a great agenda for today. And of course, um, I, I do have to once more mention the fact that Helm 2 goes out of support today um, on Friday the 13th. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but they published their deprecation timeline back in August uh, with this, frankly, rather bad bit of poetry uh, stolen from Lewis Carroll. Uh, and if you read that uh, blog post, you'll see that today is the day. So next up, um, I think I'm a couple of minutes ahead of time, but really close. Uh, next up is Brees, who is going to be kicking off a workshop on getting started with GitOps. And he's going to be setting up a GitOps pipeline using Flux V2, uh, which has recently been renamed. It used to be known as the, the GitOps toolkit, uh, but that's really the underlying SDK now. And so uh, Brees is going to talk through installing and configuring Flux to to manage your GitOps, your Kubernetes clusters with GitOps, and um, I hope you really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it myself. Thanks. <laughs>